Hello and welcome to this bite-sized episode of Life Lessons with me, Simon Mundy, in which we revisit a nugget from one of my previous conversations and have a closer look. Olympic silver medalist Laura Muir is one of the finest middle distance runners Britain has ever seen. But there's more. She is a trained vet too. Muir graduated from the University of Glasgow's prestigious vet school in 2018, all while still competing at the very top level. She won her first senior outdoor gold medal at the European Championships that very summer. So how did she juggle both things? And what are the key lessons to take from her experiences about not overthinking things and recognising that sometimes anticipation can be worse than reality? How on earth did you juggle everything that year? Like, I look back on it now and I do think, how, how on earth did I do it? But um, I think it's just, you just got to have your priorities, I guess. And for me, it was running or veterinary. And every single minute of every single day was running or veterinary. Um, and you just have to put everything else to the side. And it's, um, yeah, it was really, really tough. Like, I missed out on a lot of different things. I was probably sleep deprived for quite a lot oh, of really? it too. But you need but, your um, sleep though for, you for do, both of those things. Yeah, but then at the same time, you know, if I had a deadline with, um, you know, an assignment that I had to get in or if I was on nights or if I was um, you know, on call at the weekends and things, it's um, you just got to like plough through and just try and do the best you can with the situation you've got. Were you yeah. doing like seven day weeks? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, if I was... Um, yeah, if I would be doing nights, I'd be on at the weekend. Sometimes I'd do, yeah, it's while I'm a hospital, I'd be working some of the weekends and things. So, yeah, it was crazy now that I look back on it. But it was just so important to me, that, you know, that I qualified um, as a vet. So, so to, just to be clear, you mentioned nights. So you were like doing shift work. So you were you were working nights within that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Work, worked nights when I was in mean, hospital. And I was doing, um, when I was in equine hospital, we'd do, up and do checks every couple of hours on the horses and... Um, and it was freezing and it was snowing and it was just, oh, goodness, yeah, it was hard. I mean, you can tell people who do shift work, it's, it's brutal. Yeah. So trying to combine that with being a world, you know, performing physically to a world class level, mm. did, did it affect your performances at all? I think it did a bit. Yeah, I mean, um, I performed really well world indoors, which I think it's probably because I just had no time to think about it. I look back now at some of the sessions I did um during final year and some of them were like amazing and I'm like how on earth did I do that but I think it's because you're, you're just so busy all day thinking about you know I've got this case to do that case to do is that on check on that before I leave and then I'd literally be running from like the small hospital to to training quite literally sometimes and then you just rock up and just get into it straight away and then just yeah go back and crash out and sleep and get up again and I think just because not having to think about it you just you just plow on with it you just get it done so Almost, yeah, not having any time at all to, to think about it at all, yeah. That's interesting because I speak to a lot of people about various psychological tactics, should we say, things like mm. visualisation or whatever else. But actually, oftentimes, just getting out of your own way yeah. and the less you can think helps performance. Yeah, well, I think part of um, the thing me and my coach do is I never know what the session is before I do it um, because I think if I had all day to think about what session we had I think it would be really dark because every session's hard it's just kind of what level of hard and what level of nasty it is so I literally know when I put my spikes on I have about 30 seconds and then we start the rep so it's just like you have no time to kind of psych yourself out of it you just like right the session's this go and it's like okay and you think about it when you're on the thing right what split should I do and you just don't have time to kind of yeah psych yourself out of it and it's I think that's quite good in a sense just to be able to yeah focus on task in hand I wonder if how how that could be translated because I think let's say with a speech Mm. for a lot of people it's their worst nightmare but the anticipation is worse often than the event Mm. so I I wonder how one can take that because it's obviously served you like Mm. not thinking too much about stuff well yeah I I guess I've had similar experiences because in final year I had to do quite a few kind of presentations on cases and things and if I'd done like a PowerPoint or if I'd worked up a case, if I came to present it, I'd be like so, so nervous because I'd have thought of all the things yeah, yeah. that I wanted to say and, and not say and not look like a numpty in front of all yeah, the yeah, clinicians. Yeah, yeah. And um, and then sometimes, you know, if it was just a spontaneous thing, say we were doing a tutorial, tutorial and the, the clinician would be like, right, we're going to do this. And they'd have you standing up and talking about stuff. It's like so much easier because you've not kind of overthought yeah, yeah. it. And if it's like a QA and a type thing, it's yeah, so, so much easier. Because I think you just... You just see what comes to mind um, yeah. rather than overthinking what you say and that, oh, I didn't say and or but at this point in time. And so, yeah, I think there's a lot to be said about not trying to overthink stuff. Like before a race, um, when I'm on the start line, 
I guess in fifteen hundred, the, the race I usually compete in, um, there's quite a lot of different ways you can run it, and it can be quite tactical, and there's lots of different ways to do it. So I can't often say to myself like three or four bullet points. I'll be on the line. I'll be like, right, I want to get out hard, or I want to get into this position. I want to keep an eye on that person. I want to keep up the clock. You know, keep an eye on the splits at this time on the clock. Um, just two or three, you know, points and start uh-huh. line, and not overthink things. Yeah. Um, in that sense, so it's quite good because I'd be like, right, one, two, three, you know, execute those three things, yeah. um, and that tends to work quite well. Rather than be like, okay, I want to be at this position at yeah. this point in the race, I want to do this at this point in the race, because then like if that doesn't happen, you panic, and you can just see it when you're yeah. watching races, like, oh, that person's wanted to do this and it's not happened and they panicked. So yeah, I think just kind of bullet points, two, three things, the most important things, and stick to them. Thank you for listening to this bite-sized episode of the Life Lessons podcast. If you'd like to get in touch, please do feel free to drop me an email via my website, simonmundy.com. And just a reminder that my full-length conversations are now back. They're out every Monday morning. 